non-volatile JK flip-flop. Core logic, because it's supposed to have a question mark like that. Core logic, because strictly speaking it isn't, but I'll get back to that. This video is dedicated to my favourite YouTuber of all time, Jerry Ellsworth, and it'd be well worth checking out her video on CoreLogic Forgotten Technology. This video was going to be a much longer tutorial on two types of flip-flops, the SR and the JK flip-flop, uh, but it just got drawn out, it was way too long, so there's plenty of other videos out there for that. They're also all way too long. I'll start out with a little demo of the 74HC76, a CMOS based uh, dual flip flop. So it's got two JK flip flop circuits. So I started up making a little board as small as I can. Isn't it pretty? I'm only using one of the two JK flip flop circuits in this chip. Its Q and not Q outputs are connected to two green LEDs. And uh, this would be right for an electronic switch, but uh, since I don't have any button debounce, it does get false triggers. The circuit's fast enough to detect the button bounce as multiple button presses and messes things up sometimes. If the input to this circuit was the pulsing output of a 555, we'd be fine without any debouncing, but it isn't. It's a button, so I've added a resistor capacitor circuit to debounce, and now we have nice smooth transitions from one LED to the other. Here's the input-output truth table for a JK flip-flop. And note that the reason it's possible to toggle its states with one button is because its inputs were tied together. If you completely grew up on microcontrollers and didn't know what a flip-flop was, it's still possible you could have implemented one in software every time you toggle a bit. Now this is where the non-volatile part comes in. I was shown this page of a 1970s vintage engineering manual on a forum back when I was doing the core RAM project. Non-volatile memory provides non-destructive readout and requires no sensing amplifiers. Uses only conventional transistors, magnetic switching cores, resistors and capacitors. Useful for systems requiring low memory capacity from a few bits to about 100 bits. Cores ensure that the flip-flop will return to a state it was in prior to power removal. Uses electronic memories 50 mil linear select cores. Will operate on a supply between 3 and 5 volts. Really, they had me way back at the first word, non-volatile. The circuit didn't work for me straight away using modern transistor equivalents, so I did get some help from two forums. Some resistor values here are different. The original schematic had some missing interconnects, and it took me a while to figure out that the inputs were negative edge triggered. This is the circuit with LEDs and buttons that you'll see shortly. I got two different types of square loop ferrite from eBay back when I was doing the core RAM project. Their lack of availability is the one thing that could prevent anyone coming along and reproducing this project. I used the smaller 1mm diameter cores for the core RAM project, and the larger ones for this project, which I never was sure was square loop ferrite until now. With difficulty, it is possible to pass thin wire through the 1mm cores four times, but I can't actually verify they work in this circuit. The larger cores are of course much easier to wind and you'll see why they're mounted on their own door to board a little later. Here come the obligatory glamour shots. Completed circuit with LEDs, buttons and magnetic cores. And here's the YouTube thumbnail. It's gotta be. <laughs> The momentary switch up the top there is a power button which is really needed to demonstrate that the circuit is non-volatile. The JK inputs here are not tied together so they will either set or reset Q. You'll notice whenever I cycle power to the circuit it is restored in its previous state when it comes back on. The output not Q to the right there is always the inverted state of Q, so we could really just pay attention to Q and call that the one bit of memory that is either set or clear. The difference between an SR flip-flop and a JK flip-flop is what happens when you set both inputs together. A JK flip-flop will toggle its state, an SR flip-flop will enter an invalid state where Q equals not Q, and that's not very logical is it, since Q is never supposed to equal not Q. 
This segment was essentially a reliability test where I'd really punish it by cycling power quickly. There's not much I can do to confuse it manually, but one of the reasons this circuit doesn't get destroyed at the end of the video is because I've got plans for it in the future. I might try to cycle the power electronically and see how fast it can happen. It might also be worthwhile seeing how fast a microcontroller can toggle the memory while the non-volatile state is still valid. Back to why the magnetic core was on a daughter board, so I can replace it with jumper links. The circuit is after all a transistorized flip-flop on its own, it just doesn't have the non-volatile memory without the cores. You'll see it power up, it's a race between two transistors to switch on and the slightly faster transistor should usually win. And finally, connecting the two inputs together to configure it as a toggle flip-flop. With the two inputs connected together, pressing either button will be the same as pressing both buttons at the same time and toggle the output. Now we're back where we were earlier in the video with the integrated circuit version. Except of course that without a battery backup, the integrated circuit version would be volatile. The very last thing I figured out about the circuit was this fancy arrangement, and it's also what I'll leave as a thought exercise for the viewer until the next video. If you're unfamiliar with square loop ferrite, then that's where Jerry Ellsworth videos will probably come in handy for you. One little hint I already mentioned at the start of the video that at power up it's a race between two transistors to turn on. A wire passing through a toroid is one turn, and whether or not that turn is a primary or a secondary of a transformer depends which side the current is coming from. The important part is still the hysteresis property of square loop ferrite. It's unlikely to be the next video, but there is some core logic to follow. See you later.